Next, we need to check for the shear resistance of the power caps. There are three critical sections needs to be checked, which are the critical sections at the offset distance or pi per phi from the column face, punching shear of 2D from the column face, and also punching shear at the perimeter at the column face. First, we design for the critical sections at pi per phi sections inside the power. The shear loops will be those power outside the critical sections. That means the reactions caused by the powers of these two units. First, we need to determine the loops per power. It is determined by dividing the ultimate Asia loops with four units of power that give you 2,119 kN. The shear force generated by two powers is equal to 4238 kN. As you know that the spacing of the powers is equal to 1.5 meter which is equals and less than 3 times the power size. That means there will be shear enhancement and the shear force will reduce to AV per 2D. So we will need to determine the reduced shear force. First, you need to determine the AV here. The width of the power caps is 2.3 meter. Half of it, it will be 1.15 meter minus half of the column size minus the cover here 150 and minus 4 per 5 of the power size. And that gives you the AB. The D will be the smaller depth of the reinforcement bar. That gives you the Shear loads of 751 kN. This reduced shear load is to be checked against the shear resistance of the power caps as given by these two equations. To solve that, you need to determine the K and also the rho 1. The K is determined by this formula in the functions of D which is obtained as 1.45 and the value is less than 2.0 that means you can use k equals to 1.45 the row 1 here is determined from the amount of reinforcement bar provided divided by b and the depth of the section which gives you 0 0.0035 the number is less than 0 0.02 that means you may use that number substitute the relevant value into the formula you get 911 kN use this formula for you to find the VRDC mean substitute the K into the equations you get at to 1.1 kN. Your shear resistance will be the larger value of the two. Therefore, the larger value of the two will be 911 kN. This is to be checked against the VED reduce, which is 751 kN. That means the shear resistance is acceptable. Next, you need to check for the punching shear. And you know that your power spacing is equals and less than 3 times the power size. That means you don't have to check for the punching shear. Therefore, in this case, punching shear is not required. Next, you will need to check for the punching shear for column parameter. This is done by using these equations. First, you determine the resistance of the shear based on this formula. The formula here 
and the formula in this spreadsheet varied slightly. The difference is the U and D. That means this formula is to be multiplied with U and D to obtain the shear load instead of shear stress. This formula here is used to determine the shear stress. The U here is actually refers to the perimeters of the columns which is equals to 2 times the B plus 2 times the H. Substitute into the relevant equations, you get your punching shear resistance equals to 11890 kN. In comparison to the looks acting on the columns, it is greater than the look, that means the punching shear resistance is adequate. Next, you need to determine the maximum bar spacing. You can use these formulas for you to determine the stress in the reinforcement bar, which is the ratio of quasi-permanent load in comparison to the ultimate load, and refers to table 7.3n in Eurocode 2 in reference to the crack width of 0.3 mm. Interpolate and determine the maximum spacing of reinforcement bar. Substitute the GK and QK into the equations. You get the stress in the reinforcement bar equals to 218 Newton per mn square. Refers to table 7.3n in Euro code. Interpolate from the columns of crack width equals to 0.3 mm, the maximum allowable spacing will be 228 mm. Now you need to determine the spacing of the reinforcement bar, which is estimated from the width of the power caps minus the cover from the both sides and determine the spacing between 16 units of 25 mm rebar. Based on the calculations, it is equal to 142 mm, which is less than the maximum spacing. Therefore, the crack is effectively controlled. This figure shows the detailing and 16 units of Y25 mm bar size is provided both sides.